So I'm just gonna apologize at the start of this video. The wind was uh, kind of wicked. So I apologize for the sound quality. Um, if you listen close, you can still catch the gist of what I was getting at. But um, yeah, like I said, sound quality wasn't the best. So hope you guys enjoy it anyways. What's going on guys? I hope the wind isn't blowing too bad. Sun just went behind the clouds and hopefully Hopefully we are working on getting some uh, moisture building this way. That's really what I'm hoping for. It's supposed to, so we will see. And now I know what you're thinking. I actually do own more than one shirt. I just realized that this will be like the third or fourth video I've made in the last little while that I'm wearing the Kansas Soil Health Alliance shirt again. I do have more than one shirt, and no, I'm not a paid, a paid spokesperson for them. So, what we're doing today, I got a fancy cedar out here, and I'll show you what we're going to be doing. I've got some uh, buckwheat and some common vetch, and so what I'm going to do is this is kind of over in the same area where we've done the uh, dandelions that we spread, I am going to broadcast hopefully hopefully ahead of another good shower here um, gonna broadcast this seed out in here and I think what I'm gonna probably plan on doing because this corner it's just an odd corner and so what I'm probably gonna do is as you can see it's a it's a pocket all right it's just kind of a pocket but what I'll probably do is I am just gonna plan on basically from this draw here well, where are we? Where are we? Okay, from this draw here and going this way, I'm probably not going to do anything with this except try to make it pollinator habitat for, again, bees plus native pollinators and just give them some sort of habitat right here with the trees. And uh, yeah, this is totally experimental. Um, we do have some dandelions starting to bloom. Um, I've seen more today than I have yet. So I would say today is the first day, really, of dandelions blooming. Uh, the um, henbit has been blooming for a while. The hairy vetch is really starting to come on out here. I'll show you. Well, here. Let me just do this. I'll turn you around. So the hairy vetch is really starting to come on. Um, this here, this is hairy vetch. And it's going to take over a lot of these uh, spaces. Like I said, hopefully it's a little early on the buckwheat to be, have it, it be getting out here, but I'm hoping it'll be okay. But we'll see. Like I said, it's experiment with common event for darn sure will be just fine. And then maybe as the summer goes, we can come out here with some other seed, uh, some sort of summer flowering mix. And just go straight into this, let the hairy vet just go to seed and just kind of see what we can do. Like I said, it's a little area nothing major this is always kind of a meh spot for growing stuff anyways and so i figure what the heck we're not going to figure anything out if we don't try so we got our fancy weights and measurements bucket try to do this one-handed bear with me a minute common vetch it doesn't look any different than hairy vetch i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do this one-handed guys there we go and basically the difference between hairy vetch and common vetch other than winter hardiness there's much more difference than that by all means let me know i just don't know what it is Other than like I said, the winter party. And I, and I think the hairy bench tends to have, be a little bit more just vigorous in general. So, we'll start with that. Give it a very thorough mixing. And we'll kind of get into a spot. And we'll, I'll probably just kind of choose a bare spot and we'll see how we go. All right. Better. 
my GPS isn't working today. The budget's tight, tech support sucks. Uh, you know how it goes. We are just eyeballing the crap out of this. Trying to get decent coverage. Um, fortunately, we're not we're not rich not a rich enough farmer to upgrade to. Uh, Hopefully it's enough. Um, like I said, there is a lot of hairy vetch here, so it's going to bloom and reproduce. So hopefully I just kind of increase the seed length a little bit. I don't really want to use all my seed. If I we get to a point and I'm just not seeing any stuff, any buckwheat, little plants coming up. Trying to add to the seed bank. Ideally, what I need to do is come out here with some like yellow blossom sweet clover and alfalfa in the fall and broadcast it just so it's sitting here. And then maybe, yeah, maybe it'll come up, come up the next spring. But it's just to me, it's just about trying to grow the seed bank a little bit. Like I said, it's just a little plot. If we end up, for some reason in the future, losing the ground, so be it out of a lot. We learn, as always, that's what a lot of it's about. So. Of course, it's really windy today, but I was looking to see if we put up a box here last, last spring, like May or April. And like I said, even if we don't catch any bees, we're providing habitat for the native pollinators and if there are any bee, feral bees in, in the creek, so be it, that's fine. Um, yeah, we will go from there and we'll see what we, see what we get for germination and hopefully we get some rain. <laughs> 